You have written and recounted so many moments as a part of your work. Let's start with the housing marches. 200 days of protests in this city. What was the goal of that specific movement? You know, Milwaukee was starting to become a part of this manufacturing boom. And the city, like other major cities across this country, needed workers to fill those jobs. And my parents and people like that from the South flooded areas like Milwaukee, Chicago, Detroit, you name it, to fill those jobs. And when we got, when my parents got here, they were really uh, secluded to certain areas of the city that they could live, primarily the north north side of Milwaukee. The late Vell Phillips fought on a common council to to change the laws to make it so uh, people of color could live anywhere they wanted to in the city. She was rejected time after time as the only black uh, common council uh, member uh, by her white counterparts because they fought against it. It wasn't until the Fair Housing Bill passed, the act passed that you know it opened the doors for people to live where they wanted to live. But a lot of people don't know about the marches and, and, the, and the power that went into those marches. You know, My parents were a part of the march. A lot of my relatives were a part of the march. The NAACP Student Council, which consisted of young people who march every single day. Some of them had bricks thrown at them. Some had, you know, uh, were, were, were hit with rocks and all kinds of things. But they continued to march and they marched so they so that they could live anywhere that they wanted to and so that their future generations could as well. But one thing that we need to know is that when the Fair Housing March passed, it just didn't open the doors and people like uh, my parents could all of a sudden start living in places like Mequon or Whitefish Bay or places like that. It just really, it was a piece of legislation that said, okay, now it's legal to do that. It's, it's interesting that we bring this up because um, our, I, I'm working on a story right now on um, the late uh, great Hank Aaron. And Hank Aaron was one of the first black athletes to live on Capitol Drive in Mil- in Milwaukee. And at the time it was called Blackfish Bay when, when a black person could live in what was considered a very affluent area. But one thing that, um, that causes segregation to be such a problem is when you leave and the resources go with you. When white people go to the suburbs, when white people move outside of the city, those valuable resources go with them. And what's left behind is all the other stuff that they tried to escape from. I think I think we could all agree that diversity works. I mean, I don't you don't hear many people saying that just keep all things all white or all black or all Hispanic or all this. I think we work better when we are able to bounce ideas off of each other and learn from one another. And it just makes our educational system better. It makes our living conditions better. And it just makes our lives better because we, we're constantly learning from each other. And that's what we should be striving for, not building up bridges and fences to keep people from living next door to you. You talked about this move to the suburbs and the resources going with people. Before that happened though, History shows that there was a point in time where Milwaukee was a great place for black people to live. And there was a lot of opportunities. And when I say resources, that means jobs, right? Opportunities to own your own home. You grew up during that time period. What was the experience like? And what, what, why did you feel that it was this thriving place? Well, it's, it's interesting. The New York Times did this big piece on Milwaukee back in 1970. And Milwaukee at that time, they labeled Milwaukee as the best place for African Americans to live. And I was born in 1969, so it was you know, a little bit before me. I was a year old, but it was labeled as the best place for African Americans to live. And it was based on a number of factors. One, African Americans were able to find a lot of employment manufacturing. My father worked, it was a welder. My mother worked in a similar line at Costco Operation and other, other companies like that. But manufacturing was, was like this big generator, livable wage jobs, and it allowed people who came from the South to purchase their first home. It allowed them to build wealth and, and get married and raise families. It was, it was a time where um, we had diversity in our neighborhoods. 
It was a time when a crime rate was lower. It was a time where people could buy their first cars and, and have disposable income to go out to the movies and go out to eat and things like that. It was a bustling time in this city. And it was a time that African Americans looked at this and said, this is a time of growth. This is a time where we can make it. We started to see white flight take place in our neighborhoods. We started to see um, uh, our houses and things like that start to decline and, and people not able to keep up with their with their homes. So it was a great change that took place like from 19, it was a base place to raise a family for a black person. And today we look at it and people say this is the worst place to raise a black child. A lot has taken place during that time. 